Over the past few months, I've been exercising three times a week at home due to the coronavirus. The usual routine is 30 to 35 minutes with my heart rate between 85 and 90 percent. In order to do that, I use the generator bike stand that I showed you on my channel a while back and place a 50 watt halogen lamp on the regulated 13.5 volt output. Doing that creates just the right amount of resistance when the lamp is illuminated around 75% brightness. What I'd like to do in this video is show you what kind of power output you can expect if you decide to make a bicycle generator. So many videos on YouTube grossly exaggerate or lie about the power output for their bicycle generator. Some channels have a battery and inverter connected to the bicycle, so you really cannot tell how powerful the system is because all the power is coming off the 12 volt lead acid battery and a much lower level of power from the alternator or generator to charge the battery. My setup supplies 12 volts DC all the way up to 120 volts DC directly from the bicycle, no battery. And right here you can see a view looking down on the bicycle inside the stand. Everything lined up very nicely. To remove the bike from the stand it's very easy, just loosen this knob, pull it up and out. Right here you can see the pulley that I welded onto the face of the treadmill motor. By doing that I'm able to use a three groove flat belt between the treadmill motor and the other pulley connected to the rear wheel. My stand is designed for a 26 inch mountain bike. The wheel is pressed very firmly against the spool so there's no slippage. And here you can see that belt. Good tension and you can adjust the tension a little bit using this knob to put that spool closer to the wheel or a little further outward. This tire will last around six months if you use the bicycle generator three days a week for about a half an hour. The pulley that you're looking at I removed from a Japanese vehicle. It was on the power steering pump. I modified it to fit right on the spool connected to the rear wheel. This view right here you can see that very heavy cast iron flywheel on the treadmill motor. The purpose of the flywheel is to smooth out variations of speed for more consistent power output. Now the treadmill motor, depending on how fast you pedal the bicycle, will put out between 50 and 90 volts. That output goes to the step-down converter, which connects to this accessory socket with a regulated 13.5 volt output, as well as to these alligator clips. This board right here is a DC to DC converter, and it allows me to have up to 120 volts output on this plug. As I rotate the wheel, you can see how smoothly everything turns. Where the tire contacts the spool, you can see I have non-skid tape. For the first demonstration, I have a 100 watt rated halogen lamp connected to this power meter, and I just want to give you an idea of power output for this setup, and you'll also be able to see the level of difficulty when it comes to pedaling to maintain certain power levels. While I'm pedaling, you can keep an eye on the meter. And I do have the speed set where it's going to give me just the right amount of rotation on the rear wheel but not too much effort with my feet pushing down on the pedals. Right now we're leveling off around 84 watts. And it's fairly comfortable. I could probably do this for about 10 or 15 minutes. What I'd like to do now is increase the load on the power meter. And to do that, I added another bulb. As you can see, it's harder for me to get the bicycle going to bring it up to the full power level. We're peaking out around 111 watts, and with the level of force that I'm applying to the pedals, I could probably do this between 5 and 8 minutes. Now we're going to test out the power output using 120 volt appliances and tools. The first one you see here is a Bissell vacuum cleaner. You can see 120 volts, 60 hertz. This vacuum cleaner uses a universal motor, so it will operate using AC or DC. Power rating for this is 2 amps. Let's give it a try. The amount of pressure that I have to exert to keep this going at full speed is even higher than the 12 volt test that I just showed you, up to 111 watts. Best, 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 best. Oh my God. See the output voltage is a steady 115 volts. So no problem powering the vacuum directly off the bike, but we'd be lucky to last only two or three minutes. 
Now we're going to power up a 120 volt, 200 watt halogen spotlight. This feels about the same or a little more difficult than the vacuum cleaner. And no problem again maintaining the full voltage output at 115. Now the last thing I want to do is a little test. It may work, it may not work. I want to see if I can take a half inch hammer drill and drill through a two inch thick concrete stepping stone. I might not be able to do it the first try, and if I can't, we're going to have to do it maybe two times or three times, but I just want to test it out to see if I can power the drill. I was only able to get the voltage as high as 75 volts, maintained it for a short period of time, drifted down a little bit lower, and then I couldn't take it anymore. Starting off wasn't bad, but once that drill turned on, the load that was placed on the generator was so much I could not hold up for more than about 15 or 20 seconds. Since I need a break, my assistant is going to pedal the bike, and I'm going to drill and hopefully we can get all the way through the stone. Go. You can see the maximum voltage was around 63 volts, and he did a very good job of maintaining voltage in the mid 50s for a while and after a while I just couldn't take it anymore the voltage dropped down to the 40s. Two people tried it. We almost died trying it and I think we're almost all the way through. Went through. Nice. Right here. The tip of it, the very tip, came through right there. And guys, that is it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thank you very much for watching.